A few weeks back, I went to my university library and took out a bunch of books in machine learning. They took a while to go through, but I managed to narrow it down to a roadmap, consisting both of books and some online resources that teaches you the basics of machine learning from the ground up without too many prerequisites. In this video, I want to share a step-by-step -step guide to learn machine learning by yourself as a complete beginner. We're going to cover this list of topics. Feed-forward neural networks, convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, reinforcement learning, autoencoders, and attention. But before we get into it, there are two things that I should say. First, this seems like a lot of stuff, and that's because it is a lot of stuff. I estimate that it should take about four months to cover properly if you're studying by yourself. Second, this is by no means a comprehensive list. Machine learning is a gigantic area and it's growing every day. But I do think this is a good place to start and get fundamental knowledge. But before getting into the specific topic-by-topic -topic breakdown, I'd like to recommend three books just right off the bat. The first is Grokking Deep Learning by Andrew Trask. This is personally one of my favorite books to learn the content because it's super conversational and casual in its style. It has tons of examples and almost all the contents have a diagram accompanying them, which makes it really easy to follow. The second is the 100-page machine learning book by Andre Burkhoff. This book is exactly what it sounds like. It's a hundred or so page book that explains the fundamentals of how neural networks work. It's quite different from the first book. It's a lot more mathematically intense. So if you're the kind of person who likes to see lots of equations to understand something, this is probably the book for you. The third book I'd recommend is Deep Learning with PyTorch. This book is really good if you'd like to understand how to code neural networks using Python. So if you want to work in ML and industry, for example, there are two Python packages that are used most commonly. These are PyTorch and TensorFlow. This book is really good because throughout it explains how to code neural networks using PyTorch. So it gives you very practical skills. So what I want to do now is go step by step through the various topics that I talked about at the start of the video and explain exactly which parts of these books, in my opinion, explain these subjects really well. Our first topic is feed forward neural networks. So the main questions to answer here are first of all, what is a neural network? How does it work? And what are the basic parts? To learn this stuff, look no further than chapter one of this book by Michael Nielsen. It is so good and so clear and also really mathematically precise. Michael Nielsen has very kindly made this book freely available online. If you're reading Grokking Deep Learning, chapters two and three are really good. And if you're reading the 100 page machine learning handbook, I'd recommend these chapters over here. So after you've read all this stuff, what's a good test if you've understood all the content? This diagram on the screen over here is a basic picture of what a feed-forward neural network looks like. So if you can understand what this diagram is saying and what all the various parts are, I think you're in good shape. So now you know what a neural network is. The next question to answer is, how do you train a neural network? When we say machine learning, what does learning refer to? There are two algorithms to keep in mind here, gradient descent, and backpropagation. Now, if your use case is that you want to be able to build a neural network, or you want to be able to use neural networks for industry, you don't actually have to know how these algorithms work. Most Python packages have these as pre-built libraries, so you can just treat them as a black box. If you'd like to understand how these algorithms work, the learning curve is a little bit steep. You have to know multiverbal calculus and linear algebra. Chapters four and six of Grokking Machine Learning, in my opinion, explain these concepts really well. Michael Nielsen also has a wonderful chapter about this in his book as well. Hey, before we continue, I have a really special announcement. I recently started a newsletter in math and machine learning. So this is completely free. Every week, I pick a topic in math and ML, and I find the best links on the internet for you to self-study that topic. The newsletter also has a problem of the week, and you can submit your solution to that problem for a chance to be featured in the following week's issue of the newsletter. So there have been about 10 issues of the newsletter so far. Here's a sample of some of the topics that we've seen in the newsletter. If you'd like to sign up, there's a form in the description. Just put your email in the form and I'll appear in your inbox. With that said, let's get back to the video. Our next topic is convolutional neural networks, or CNNs. CNNs are used primarily for image processing. So let's say you want to write a neural network that will classify handwritten digits. So something that'll tell you this is a three, this is a six, and this is a nine or a neural network that will tell you whether an image is a cat or a dog. So this is a cat and this is a dog. CNNs are really good at doing this sort of thing. As the name suggests, the important operation in a convolutional neural network is something called a convolution. There are two really good videos by the channel Computer File that explain how this works visually. So one of them is about blurs and filters, and the other one is about edge detection. All the links are in the description. Computerfile also has a nice video explaining on a very high level how convolutional neural networks work. 
The link is also in the description. To understand this in more detail, the book Deep Learning by PyTorch has a full chapter explaining how CNNs work. So it explains each of the components of a CNN and exactly how they all fit together to make the overall structure. It has a nice diagram that summarizes how a CNN is structured. So if you can understand this diagram and explains what all the components are, I think you're in good shape. The next topic we're covering is recurrent neural networks or RNNs. RNNs are really good at generating sequential data. So for example, let's say you want to generate an AI that writes Shakespeare for you. The thing with sentences in the English language is that every word in a sentence depends on the words that came before it. So a sentence like, I am eating a blank, there are certain words that would make a lot of sense in the blank, but there are certain words that just wouldn't make sense in the blank, even if they're the right part of speech. It just doesn't fit with the previous words in the sentence. So if you're writing a neural network that generates sentences, every word it generates has to depend on the previous words it's already generated. So an RNN has a structure that enables you to do this well. But the trouble with RNNs is that they are notoriously confusing to learn about for the first time. They have this very strange recursive structure that's really difficult to wrap your head around. The light bulb moment for me was when I started reading chapter 12 of Grokking Machine Learning. In my opinion, this is one of the clearest explanations of RNNs out there. If you're more of a videos person, here are two videos that I really liked. There's this really nice video by Serrano Academy that explains RNNs quite clearly. It's one of the clearest explanations out there for this concept. There's also this video by StatQuest that gives a nice high-level overview of how RNNs work. The fourth topic in our list is autoencoders. Autoencoders are a kind of neural network that are good at removing noise or excess data from a data set. They can be used in a number of ways. So one example is dimensionality reduction. If you have data in a very high dimensional space, how do you represent it efficiently using fewer parameters? Another example is noise reduction in images. If you have an image with a lot of noise, how do you train a network to get rid of the noise? The explanation I liked the most for this concept was chapter six of Deep Learning with PyTorch. It's a little bit intimidating, but it has all the details in it and everything's explained using PyTorch. If you're more of a videos person, there's a video playlist by the channel Digital Srini that I think explains this concept really thoroughly. All the links are in the description. Our next topic is reinforcement learning. So suppose you want to teach a computer how to play chess. One way to do this is you start the computer off by playing completely randomly. Whenever it plays a good move, you give it a reward. And whenever it plays a bad move, you give it a penalty. Over time, the network will learn which actions lead to maximizing the reward and minimizing the penalty, and the network will move in that direction. So this process is called reinforcement learning. The explanation of this I liked the most was chapter nine of Deep Learning by PyTorch. This is very thorough and it has lots of Python exercises throughout. The last topic on our list is attention. Attention is the algorithm that forms the basis for ChatGPT. It was announced in what is now a famous paper called Attention is All You Need. So why is this called attention? So say I have a sentence like this. I went to the park and sat on a bench. Certain words in that sentence are really important and we give them extra attention. For example, sat, park, bench. They're important because if you change them, the meaning of the sentence fundamentally changes. Whereas certain words in the sentence are of secondary importance, like to and a. Uh. It doesn't really affect the sentence's meaning that much. So when we read sentences, we don't give equal amounts of attention to all the words in a sentence. We focus our attention on certain words and we give less attention to other words. Likewise, at a very high level, attention is a mechanism that allows models to put a lot of emphasis on certain parts of the input and less emphasis on other parts of the input. If you want to learn this, look no further than this absolutely amazing blog post by Jay Alamar. It is so clear and explains this in a lot of detail. If you're more of a video person, there's this lecture by Stanford Online that also explains attention really clearly. So this is a lot of material. So after all this, I want to take some time to address some questions that may come up when you're studying this stuff. One question that comes up quite a lot is, do you need to know a lot of math to study machine learning? For most of the stuff in this video, the answer is definitely no. The most complicated math you'll see when studying this stuff is what is a matrix and how do you multiply two matrices? Another question which comes up quite a lot is do you need to know how to code? And the answer is definitely yes. Most of the books that I recommended came with Python exercises throughout. So I'd highly recommend that when you're reading the book to actually have a computer out and code along as you're reading. Because it's one thing to understand theoretically how a machine learning network works, but it's another thing to build one yourself with code because that's when things will really start making sense. So that's all for this video. If there are any other learning resources you think would be beneficial for other people, 
please let me know down in the comments so that we can all learn from each other. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.